Good, everyone. Welcome. This is episode 20 of the Cathode Ray Podcast. I'm here with my friend Steve Nutter. Welcome to episode 20, mate. How you doing? Yeah, episode 20. Can't believe it, man. I was like, that's almost, uh, if we include all the times we took a break, that's almost like six months now we've been doing <laughs> it this. It is. Yeah, so, yeah, it's awesome. A, an accomplishment. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Good. Sun shining behind me today. So, uh, nice. we're, uh, we're doing better. So, yeah, things are good. Yeah, things are right. So thank you everyone for for listening along for twenty episodes, and uh, we got loads more coming in. Uh, we're gonna have a little break as well, Steve. You're going on a bit of a trip, so we're gonna take yeah, uh, a week we or can, two off. We could talk about that just real quick. Uh, yeah, my I have a younger brother. He is he lives in uh, Northern California in wine country, and um, we will be going to his. He's getting married at the end of April. And so we're going over there to visit him and and go to the wedding. And so that should be fun going out to the wine country. Plus his fiance is a, I've telling Lewis about this. She's full native American from an Indian tribe. And I don't know the tribe or anything, uh, but I know that we'll find out all that because it's going to be, you know, a traditional uh, wedding, native American style wedding. Um, it was actually pretty funny. My my mom and like my or my stepmom and, and, and my wife, they were like, "What do we wear to this wedding?" And so she had sent them all these uh, designs that were for like, and they were like flowery, you know, very native uh, wrap style dresses. And they, and all of my my family, my the women were just like, "What? We got? Oh my goodness! I'm gonna look awful in that." And uh, just randomly, of course, since everything is impossible to get right now due to COVID, this person who uh, the company that makes these uh, outfits is like sold out for six months. So everybody, (laughs) nobody has to go (laughs) wear anything unusual or buy any one time outfit, which I was like, oh, my gosh, now we got to buy a one time outfit. You know, so right. it, it's like that, yeah, having a destination wedding. You'll have to. It's not really a destination <laughs> wedding, but you got to pay exactly. to get there. You got to pay yeah. for the outfit. You got to yeah. the whole thing. So okay, as much as we respect the traditions. Oh yeah, of, yeah. Uh, no, the no it was of that was my cheapskate <laughs> kicking in. But yeah, no, that was. So it it should be really interesting. I definitely have. Uh, we could talk about it more afterwards because I'm I'm interested in seeing how that goes. What happens? Right. Um, so we'll it's been a while since I've been to. Uh, actually, none of my siblings I, are married, so this is the first one besides me. Hmm. So that should be, that should be fun. Oh, it's gonna be good. A nice family getaway. All right. All right. So uh, yeah, I'll keep on. I'll we'll see if we can find any CRTs out there too. Just oh, please, know, the Northern let's California. See. Let's see. I'll do see probably some stupid one prices out in just like a wine wine field, hanging out, <laughs> just growing in the field. There. Yeah, just chilling. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so let's, we'll get into the different topics we've got. Um, I mean, speaking of crazy bargains, the, the quick one that I, I decided today, um, cause every day I'm on my local classifieds, my local sale websites, looking at things and I'm like, oh, that guy's an idiot. Oh, that's stupid. Yeah. Oh, that one's all right. And I realize I need to start posting about these. So, uh, my new series on our blog is called tell him he's dreaming. And it's about all the stupid prices that people are trying to put on CRTs and some good ones. And my thoughts on my, because I've wanted to, uh, Steve has done such a good job over the years of presenting his market watch. It's very analytical. He, uh, I've always admired the work that you do. You get eBay, your breakdown, he's got spreadsheets, he's got graphs. I love the, I love what's done. Um, and it's so much harder to do that for Europe because we don't have one unified market. We don't have unified shipping. Um, so I've just started off just commenting on the marketplaces that I see in my local area. And if anyone else, look, if you have your local marketplace, send me a link. I would love to look at it. I'll take a look every week and find the crazy, uh, the crazy, um, deals or the the stupid prices on that. And the, cause the thing is like, the first thing is if someone came to me and said, Hey, Give me your local marketplace and I'll tell the whole world about it. Well, you'd be like, nah, because it's mine. <laughs> and they're my friggin' deals. No. But that's the special thing about CRTs, especially in Europe, because we don't have this unified shipping that I can look at the CRT listings for the for Ljubljana in Slovenia, right? Because I have no friggin' way of shipping that 
here. That's like, I could tell all of your CRT nerds about, hey, there's a BVM, I don't know, something or other down there, great price, but there's no shipping that you can organize. Because it's just, it's like when my girlfriend asked me about, well, you got all these monitors, how much did you say they were worth? And, uh, well, in our free market, something is only worth what someone will pay, which is what I think is forgotten in the retro market a little bit. There's an idea of value. Oh, this is worth this much. And now it's worth that much. But something in our system is only worth what someone will pay. And if you can't get that product to someone, then it's not worth anything. My BVM in Estonia is not worth that much because no one around here is going to buy it. So my point is, don't be scared of sending me your, if you've got your local classifieds where you might see it, I would love to troll through them and make fun <laughs> of your local sellers as well, wherever around Europe you might be. So I'm going to slowly start yeah. to build a little list. Well, how, this is this is a great, it's a great idea. Actually, I like, uh, I always like to, mm. that's more fun to me than the actual research of finding out like the, how many <laughs> it's COVID through six months of eBay listings that were sold and, and counting up every single like 20 M2 and reading the listing, trying to figure the condition out of 25 different sales. It's so much more fun to like pick out a couple of goofy say, you know, sale yeah. listings and totally make fun of them because they're all over the place, even around my area, especially mm. more. I think you're going to see really insane ones around areas in the United States because it's like, oh, well, it's a CRT just like that. It's a Sony CRT just like that PVM. It must yeah. be worth $300 too. And it's like, <laughs> you know, it'll be just, again, some piece of junk uh, or just not, you know, a normal CRT and sure. barely tested. Um, people always send me stuff. Is this a good deal? And I'm like, if it's great shape, it's a good deal. If it doesn't work, it's the worst deal. What <laughs> what what am I supposed to tell from a picture? <laughs> right, no one wants. You're such a fucking retro fan. Well, have you plugged it in the 240p test suite? You want to charge? Yeah. With the whole, oh, it's what? perfect for retro games. Is the it? What they, suite. Yeah, the what? Huh? What the 240 what watts? The the yeah. presidential suite at the Holiday <laughs> Inn. What are you talking about? Yeah, I mean. That's a it's a, but it's a great thing to have fun with. I also thought it was cool because yeah, it's something you could do, and it could be from anywhere, yeah, all over. Everybody's got to have some of these crazy listings that um, hmm. that are annoying, and it doesn't even have to be. Obviously, I think the more funny ones are the ones when it's not something that's necessarily a pro monitor, but sometimes those listings get to deserve to be called out. Right. There, there so is hit, one, yeah. Go ahead. Hit me up at uh, at Zez on, on Twitter or, or Steve yeah. or, or link us both on that. Because even then, I just found one just as before we came online. I posted about it. Um, uh, VGA's monitor looks good. Price is free as well. In my local area, awesome deal. Not a, a late model, earlier model. Looks all good. And the brand is Microlink, which is a fairly generic brand, I think. Right, very but generic. The thing at the top of the monitor is it says the little like printed brand Microlink. But then clearly some like three-year-old has come along, some little Estonian kid the first time, and he's written Microlink in big letters across the top like it's the first words he's ever scrawled with a crayon all over the top of this monitor. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, like that's exactly what I want for my retro gaming machine. So send me your weird, yeah, your weird monitors, your your stuff that people have weirdly modified. I'd love to yeah, see it. Yeah, uh, I got, you know, I, I look at them all the time too because you can still find decent stuff, I feel like, on Facebook Marketplace. Sure. A lot man. of the other marketplaces have been pretty terrible. Like, I don't know. It's been a while since I've found or even looked regularly on something like Craigslist and then um, most of the stuff I'm looking at now is just random things. Try to do just like, again, the local pickup search for my area here on the uh, Facebook marketplace. I did find, man, I found somebody within like an hour of listing it. It was on Sunday and they had listed. It looked like a, a trailer from like a trailer park. Okay. okay. It had like this shag carpet. Oh, like a caravan, like you live ah, in a yes, trailer. Yes, yes, okay. caravan. Yeah. That's what they would call them. Okay. And it was so it looked really shady in the picture. And all it was was like 20 Apple monitors, CRTs from like 
the 80s and 90s. None of like the translucent stuff. This is all really mm-hmm. old. And then some printers. Yeah. So I was like, holy crap. It was Sunday. I was, I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm sending Bob pictures of him. I'm like, you want any of these things? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, man, uh, I'll take all of them if you can get any of them that are color and the printers. And so I'm like, I'm texting back with the seller and I'm like, hey, just, you know, I promise I'll be there tomorrow. I have like kids over and I can't mm. like leave them and no one's here to watch them. And she's like, great. Yeah, I'll meet you there at 11. Bring a Jeep and all this stuff. And I'm like, yes. And then it gets the next day and I'm like, all right, I'm going to go get them. And she's like, Steve, mm. uh, I sold all those to somebody else. Sorry. <sighs> and I'm like, mother. But I I mean, I can't really That's be pissed, but I, because I was, uh, I mean, what do you expect? Somebody says they're going to buy them and don't show up how many times does that happen right but you went yeah, no, so you had to buy the trailer as well no 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 I was like, just oh. that's just what it looked like you know you look at a picture and you're like do i really yeah. want to invest my time in going out and doing this because you're like yeah, am i going to okay. get attacked by a dog or <laughs> serial killer you know and so you're like i gotta like see what's going on in the background of this picture it's like or if like yeah no offense but if you like looking at a crt and you see everybody does this right if you're thinking about getting a crt aren't you looking and trying to see what the weirdo looks like who's like reflection is taking the picture so you're not like it's not like some shirtless dude like 80 tattoos or something you know looks like he's like so you see that too and you're like i don't know or something else i don't know but either way you all i always see that like the person reflection and i'm like is this like a nice just old lady or some crazy Mm. crackhead or (laughs) So, uh, yeah, that, but that one was kind of bad. So the listing was $15 each. It just said monitors, $15 each. So mm-hmm. I was like, well, shoot, you know, I, if I would have gone over there, I could have bought them all too. Mm-hmm. But this was also the day after I had, uh, had 30 monitors dropped off <laughs> already for work. And so I was like, well, it's maybe not the worst thing. Cause I don't know where I would have put them all right, right away, what are you gonna do? but it's what uh, that's the way it goes. You got to be kind of ready, you know, because that it'll be a long time before I see another um, like, lot that. like that. And especially when you're when you're dealing with that um, demographic of person, let's say, because it's not it's it's like you've got to go there and pay in cash, right? You can't be like, oh hey, I'll try, I'll can, wire you the, I'll Venmo no, you the money well, or something. You can do uh, most people will do PayPal or cash okay. or whatever. Okay, but okay. yeah, uh, it's also a lot of cash. Yeah, because it's, sure, it's it's not a lot of cash very much. And so, getting, like, at the end yeah. of the day, if you bought everything there, there was probably 20 items. So you could have probably said, hey, I'll give you 200 cash for all of it. And somebody mm-hmm. would be like, yeah, right. That's what I would have done. I would have gone in there and said, hey, I'll give you 200 bucks for all this stuff and mm-hmm. just left with it. I'm sure that's what somebody else did. Some other nerd in this area just totally got restocked on. Uh, uh, I mean, it is practically you could practice. That's a funny thing. You practically go from having no collection to overnight mm. spending two hundred dollars and having a complete Apple museum, <laughs> and you'll basement. probably see them. It's it's those collect it's those distribution centers that we keep talking about that are making yeah. money off you, Steve. It's probably one yeah, of them. Who's right. now, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They oh, keep yeah. I just got them all. Yeah. Now I'm going to resell on eBay. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that was uh, you know that's the fun part is you'll either find something really funny to laugh at and share with uh, at Zez on Twitter or you can. Um, find a good deal still that's that's i mean that's where i found i'm about to have a i'm working on the last section of a video for the uh little tv i showed off that i got for ten dollars that i showed you with shank and the little space helmet looking holy crap that thing took me an hour to get back to put together i mean it's like not meant to take apart service obviously (laughs) because it's like a has it got removable cards unbelievable it is like uh, and then I couldn't get it to f- push back together when I got it done. It took, and it literally, like, I had to cut and dremel the whole back input board area out because it just would not go back in. And it didn't matter what the the circuit board would go back in and start going U shaped every time. So <laughs> it was an incredible mess. But that was one that uh, Facebook Marketplace. I'm mean, finding like stuff here occasionally in my area. You will find BVMs and PVMs and stuff, but there's always the funny ones too. Hmm. Oh, 
okay, we got that. So what else? What have you? What do you got? Well, you got a topic for us, or yeah, yeah. Um, I've been uh, working on. I made sure I've been working on a couple of different things. Now we saw the little SMD card that I had done. Since I'm going out of town, I'm trying to like put together some stuff to come out on the channel, so nothing really skips a beat while I'm gone. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna have a three episode at least uh, yeah three episodes of me going in the first one's like crt um troubleshooting with this monitor and i'm trying to give some tips on where to go if, if you see a problem and i walk through the troubleshooting and basically discovering that that card was so terrible and then the next one which was already done is the um uh one where i rip all the smd caps off Mm -hmm. And then the final one is has been completely shot, and it's where I repair the board, but I didn't actually do any of my normal audio with it. So now I've got to piece it all together and then come up with either a short intro and then like a montage of the repair, I guess, or try to do some kind of um, important dialogue with it. Uh, so usually you're talking along with it. That's what you're saying. But yeah, you didn't do like that, usually, so now, yeah. no, yeah. And this last step, I mean, it was too noisy. Like I had family over doing all kinds of stuff, so I really didn't have an opportunity. But I needed to still work, mm. so I just shot it, and I've uh, got all the seeds shot. I'm just gonna have to go back now. And I was like, well, I got this new audio equipment. I guess I can try it out and uh, do that with it. So that's the third one the other two are completely done the third one is now the one i've got to get done before i leave town this week and then also the short episode on the uh pickup which actually turned into a longer episode because i tore the thing apart and then i had to make some repairs to it that i had found troubles on it and the pickup uh, sorry what, the little ten dollar oh, space $10 helmet one, yeah. tv sure. so um I'll have, so that was, it's funny because I'm like, well, I need a short video. The pickup videos are usually kind of easy where I show off some weird TV that I find, talk about how I found it, and then I open it up and look at it. And I was like, this son of a gun, I take it apart, you know, and it, it take, it's like, it turns into like two or three hours. And then I'm like looking at my clock and I'm like, I've already got 15 minutes of like timed footage. And I'm like, this was supposed to be a short video and it's turned into this whole fiasco. So sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes that happens too. So that, but that's my like ultimate goal is to get those done. And Dang, you've been making so many videos recently. Like it sounds like you've really perfect, like got perfected almost your workflow of working on it, filming it at the same time. It's, like you found it's your kind of like that. Yeah. But there's also, I mean, I have some big projects that I had been working on that I haven't even, I've got them shot like. So there's one project that I haven't really been talking about, but I did um, work on it the last couple of weeks. And it's me going through every single CRT in my personal collection that is um, 20 inches or larger in okay. my that I have here. Mm -hmm. And it's not just me like saying, hey, look, here's the CRT. It's me taking a few minutes with each one of them, showing it off, hooking it up, maybe telling a story about it or how I got it. Mm -hmm. and uh something unique about it and so and then i would go out and find like i went around here in my shop and i pulled every single one of them out of storage how many do you have approximately 10 i had 10, 10. okay so, 20 over 20 right inch, 20 okay. or bigger so mm -hmm. i went through and i would like i mean and you think that sounds easy but it's sure. not that easy when you're like yeah. trying to think of different things shots to put in and also at the just the task of setting up and getting four or five shots from each one and there's so much footage from that. And I was like, at the end of that one, I was like, there's like over an hour of footage that I haven't started editing. And I'm, I'm afraid that I, that's going to get so far down the road that I'll just <laughs> end up abandoning it. But I don't want mm -hmm. to, because I think that that would be a really cool like video for a longer format, something where somebody can literally just go and see a really cool video, highly better produced than normal about 10 different CRTs. Mm that are big and um, kind of something I wanted to do. And, and I wanted to do that with other CRTs and things uh, in my collection, but it's, it's, um, you know, you, you get through and then like you spend so much time filming all that stuff. And then it's like trying to go back and work on it and spend the next time it's going to be, it's, it's difficult. Uh, so in the meantime, mm -hmm. I'm always trying to do workflow things that I'm actually working through uh, 
but it is it's like i have to go and do repairs for a full day or two and then concentrate myself on just taking a full day after those days to work on uh the social media aspect of it okay i know what you mean about like just getting a, a tv and trying to talk about it and because especially you line up 20 of them and you have to like you and you do a good job of this you gotta remember 20 different stories or 20 different technical facts or something like that because i was thinking about um we've been talking a little bit about uh nokia and that before they made phones nokia made all kinds of crap literally and uh, just today i was i was uh, f- tweeting with a finnish guy who showed me that nokia used to make 386 pcs with like vga monitors and stuff i never even knew that that they made those they made all kinds of shit right and because i had seen these nokia tvs these regular crts come up locally loads and i went oh fucking cares you know i don't (laughs) care so much about this but as i i I think i tweeted once or twice about these things and people like oh nokia and i i understood oh okay to people in america you've never heard that nokia made these tvs before and maybe that's something interesting it's a name you've heard of blah 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 so the next time a, 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 a like a smallish Nokia comes up, I'm gonna pick it up. There's a 20 inch for for sale for whatever that I posted about today. But I'm not randomly picking up a 20 inch monitor just to make a, a thing. But even if I've got 14 inches, still like I was thinking to myself. My point was, how do I think up something to say about this thing? I want to show it off, but. Like, here, here it is. I could never find the service manual for it, but, you know, I, <laughs> so I admire that you can, like, say something well, about yeah. so many different screens. Well, and a lot of them are ones that I've done work to, most of them. So yeah, 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 yeah. there's, like, a story either of how I got it or it's, like, well, a lot of them are pro models, so it's, like, this one can do this. This is a... Right. You know, you could talk about the... It's just, like, for me, it's, like, you could go and... uh like I, if I was some guy into classic cars, it's it's like if this guy was in a classic car and went to a classic car museum, he could probably spitball three or four minutes in front of each car, special sure. features just about that car. Sure. And and it's like so since he knows so much about cars or something, it's mm-hmm. like, well, this is this type of engine and it's, you know, this is how it differs from that other engine we just looked at kind of deal. It's the same thing kind of like with this stuff where – for me, that's that's like the only easy. That's like the easy part, right? It's like I can find, yeah. I could just sit there and, and, and like talk about a stupid machine for like fifteen minutes, too long most of the time, <laughs> as opposed to being where like people will fall asleep. Not not so much as not finding enough to say about it, I guess. But um, I like I like the idea of like you said. This is uh, social media is global, so there's going to be things where mm. you may stumble onto something that I won't see, but then any kind of information out there is helpful on it sure. if you really care. So yeah, it's like it's still good to just be like, this is what it does. If it's working right, we hook it up. Even sometimes it's a lot of times why with my pickups, I like to actually try to open up the monitor mm. and CRT and look inside. See if there's anything that even sticks out. A lot of times, there's nothing that's different, but it's that's um, a good point. You could open up. Is there some yeah. self adjustment pots? Is there something that seems user serviceable or something? Or, or like just, just just the yeah. idea of like you opening it up and just taking a shot of that circuit board mm-hmm. right there, okay. and then someone else comes down the road, sees that video, and they may know a lot more. You know, somebody smart like Andy King, for example, <laughs> who does yeah. a ton of these RGB mods on a tv he could say oh look there's a video on this there's the monitor and, oh i happen to see that this has that certain chip in it so i know how to rgb mod that chip that's because it's on this other monitor i just worked on mm-hmm. so at the end of the day you're still all that information is is good and uh and it's also cool because i never knew nokia i've never seen a nokia crt or anything so at the same time, knowing that it exists, so that somebody says, oh, "I have a nuclear," you're like, "No, you don't. You know, you're lying." <laughs> no, you actually do have one. Yeah. So okay, so it's good. Yeah, those sort of things that are obvious and right in front of you. But because uh, I was always just like, "Ah, mate, Nokia. I don't think they're yeah. really good." But uh, you know, no, hey, I didn't it's know. Still Especially interesting to look at. Yeah. A computer, yeah, from 386. I mean, that's old air, old school PC era. So that would be that's cool. even cooler to like see. Um, I imagine 
something tells me that that was probably more of a i'm just gonna guess but a um like a business style um set up for that pc of less because i don't know but it's global so i don't know because i never heard I don't of know like if a, no- yeah, nokia I think made we- like home pcs this would have been more something maybe sold to like an office or something you know or i don't know maybe it could be nokia um i think this well this this finnish guy that i was talking with he said that it's hard for even him in finland to find them right now um they're super and i said hey does it have any nostalgia and he's like yeah it does actually you know it has that because nokia is a place in finland it's a little bit west of tampere out there so it's a real town um Oh, but well, the, that makes a lot more sense that maybe right. so it's, it's there'd a place be stuff you can go there, to. too, that wouldn't be other places in the world. Right. That so that's things- why Finland is that epicenter for it. Because what, what I think people don't uh, maybe don't know about the history of Nokia is so before the mobile phones, they used to make all kinds of electronics. And whether that was them manufacturing it themselves or using uh, generic, you know, using generic parts and then branding them as such. But they made a lot of... There is a lot of stuff, particularly in Finland, with the brand name Nokia. And there's a friend of mine who used to work for Nokia, like back in the heyday of mobile phones when they were biggest, baddest, you know, the greatest phone company in the world. He's American. He used to live in in Helsinki. He was like very high up for marketing for them. And I would go and have lunch with him and he'd tell me these stories about Nokia and um, oh, because the first thing I would do is there was back in the day because there was like when a Nokia phone came out, it was the biggest news. Oh my god, it's the new eighty two thirty or something. <laughs> and so of course, any of these companies yeah. have the the people that want to leak the information. And there was one of the most notorious leakers for Nokia in those days was some sort of online persona. I don't know who, and the name was Tech. Techno Buffalo, and whatever reason that individual, I think it might have been the early days of YouTube or whatever was the social media then, they were always seemed to be leaking all of the Nokia stuff like weeks before, and it was really like like a problem. They're like, we got to yeah. do something about this guy, right? And so I went to have lunch with my friend at Genuine Nokia HQ in Helsinki, and you got to sign in. Because it's a yeah. corporate office, so I signed in Louis Zezeran from company Techno Buffalo, no. and I'm walking around Nokia with my badge saying Techno Buffalo. Going, yeah, oh look, I'm the gosh. guy. No, and I was like, are the bu- are the buzzers gonna go off? Did the SWAT team come from the ceiling? Uh, nothing. So security wasn't as big. But my point about Nokia was his stories that they would tell me back then is that Nokia more or less stumbled into mobile phones. Like they made all kinds of stuff and they mo- made some mobile phones and they kind of pioneered into that technology. And then they sort of, that thing took off and they were like, oh shit, this is it. And then they pushed away everything else and went all in on the phones. It wasn't some, you know, it was sort of just like they had all these bets out and all this electronics and they just stumbled yes. into the biggest well, electronics that one empire just happened in the world. To, right. That one happened to be the one that, that caught fire. Yeah, and probably right time, right for a while carried a lot of poor performing arms of Nokia until they finally we webbed their way out of everything and probably, you know, shut those other cycles down or businesses down or sold them off. Um, mm. That's and it's interesting. It's an interesting time period where you have the growth of the internet and people trying to get traction on leaking any items, any information about tech stuff. At the same time, this emerging tech, I remember back, um, I never had these phones growing up, but I remember when they were, you know, the marketing campaigns were such a big deal. Mm -hmm. And it was a big deal to reveal these phones each year, like E3 used to be or something, for phones because everything was so new with the phones and it was like, and all of a sudden you have text and then it was like different Mm -hmm. types of text. It wasn't just a simple text because that went from SMS, you know, to MMS with all that other stuff. Mm. And so you have this constant, um, you know, everybody was always wanting to see what was going to happen to the next phone thing. And now we've gotten to the point where nobody cares too much. You know, (laughs) it's like, the Every buzz. year was a generational leap almost in those days. And now it's just people are just mm. too used to it. And it's like, where are you going from here for mm. to surprise me with a phone anymore? I think. Right. It's Hard like, to know. 
It's hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's become almost like a commodity that's just not, you know, before. I can really, the one ad I think I can remember the most from this time period that really sticks out in my brain was the Motorola Razor phone. Do oh, you yeah. remember that phone that was like supposed sure. to be the coolest sex? I mean, there were people like, I wa- like I'm going to get laid because I got the razor phone. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean the What kind um, of delusion did they get into young prepubescent boys <laughs> heads that they were going to get laid by just having this razor phone, <laughs> but it was like this sleek, stylish commercial and the whole world wanted it. And it was this flip phone, and nobody knew anything about that. And then everybody had to have some kind of flippiness in their phones. And right, for a while it was. this whole stupid era of just, like, things that just, like, you open your phone and something fall off. You know? Like, eventually you have, like, that, that like, little- oh, my, my dad got me the, the Crazer, which is, like, the <laughs> Razor knockoff. <laughs> like, it just, like, crumbles after three days of using it. Um, Jay, the when I lived with Jay, the network cable guy, he had the the you know he had a decent job, so he had the razor flip out, and it had that dinky little aerial as well, like yeah. the, you got to and went in and out. I don't think it did anything, but you yes, flipped and you first, go, yeah, <laughs> and because you had to do the action, it was all about like maybe not the phone, but it was about the action, like it was the flip, flip. Like that, and but then you'd be like, "Oh, should I just spend five hundred bucks on this? Whoa, 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 I don't want to be, yeah. you know, you uh, are." But but then you're like, Phew. and then you're like, but then and you also had that very satisfying hang up, which was the duh, the close it again, like, yeah, fuck you too, buddy. Uh. Yeah, it's could, like now it's no, just uh, like, uh, uh, oh, I missed it. Like, Dang, it. Yeah. Oh, I missed it. Or it's like trying to make yeah. you do this swipe, Hello. and you're like, I can't hang up on you. And that Where was before, like, right? It was so like, satisfying now, uh, to what? to close it. It's not like like, the phone I've got on the wall over here that my daughter's like, why don't you ever call anybody on this phone? I'm like, honey, that's like a 35 year old telephone on the wall that your great great grandparents just left here. It's like, you can't call it. No, there's nothing. It's a funny ah, thing. It's just there. I used it as a prop in a video, that (laughs) 36 video where I pretended or something. I don't remember what it was. I got a phone call from somebody and it. So it's yeah, it's just on the wall. It's been here since. Do you I still was have a, a landline hooked up to your house? No, no, okay. I don't have a landline hooked up. I My mean, parents I do. Could. I'm like, what? Really? What? what century are you guys living in? But yeah, they still it's get expensive. Calls. They cost as so, much yeah. as like. Uh, I mean, it costs as much as a cell phone service does mm-hmm. almost, from what I could see. So no way. <laughs> yeah, they were. Hey, you know, actually, while we're just on the topic, another sort of side note on that. I noticed when I was in Australia recently, I noticed that the local, uh, na- well, it used to be National T- Telstra, the local telecom provider, who's the typical incumbent, big, typically known for being expensive, blah, 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 blah. All the payphone booths, they have converted to free landline calls. You can, what? in Australia, make any phone, almost any phone booth, as I saw, and make a free call to a landline. And I was like, so, wow. Wait a second. Mate, look, I swear and Dan Mons so, has got so, to come in here and connect me on this. So I know, yeah. right? So like, oh, I was thinking, like, that's crazy. Like, why do that? And then you, so you literally have just a crazy network of landlines that can almost just connect to each other where it's like, oh, if I have this number over here at this landline, I'll call it. And it's just another payphone number. So it's like something like this. Yeah, I don't know how it works. It's like, is there somebody out there that's just like using this? Is like the government using this like a non discreet way to like transmit messages between it? Like, is it go go on the public? Yeah, and go on the public line and call phone 24 over there to get your secret mission. (laughs) Right. I don't understand like what's the the business case for keeping them. I I thought that maybe they want to put their public Wi Fi boxes because they've already got the like the the things there, right? So maybe they want to put their public paid for Wi Fi there and they need an excuse to have these things sitting around everywhere. So they keep the phone booth and then say it's free and that offsets. Must be something, must be part of like an infrastructure bill or something, you know? Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's probably part of the infrastructure bill. And then it might even be something where somebody has put in the excuse that there needs to be a legacy technology in the case that there are, I bet there's one community that like is represented (laughs) that's probably all grannies and grandpas (laughs) that like 10% of this population has no cell phone and no intention of you know, like they're like I'll die before I get a cell phone. That's the point of my <laughs> life to live an entire life without a cell phone. And so they're like, yeah, we're gonna need to keep these 
this infrastructure going and maybe we can spruce up these other old telephone booths and and keep them looking i don't know mm-hmm. something usable instead of like in my areas they're owned by like you said telecommunications companies biggest one here is like at&t um probably and then it's that's who owns most of the phone lines around here and things like that so they would have those booths but they've been just stripped so if you go to one it's usually got nothing in it just the old hmm. frame and everything's ripped out i can't remember the last time i saw one with actually one in it because i wow. you know now it's almost like it's like a woo look you know yeah what's it's the like, use of keeping just the frame why not just unbolt the whole thing and oh it's just it? laziness it's just yeah, like okay. they don't have the money to go and hire somebody to go out and unbolt it but somebody will go and just eventually start ripping pieces of it off and take right. it to like a scrap metal scrap. yard and be like hey oh, sell that shit yeah, i've got yeah, yeah. 15 dollars worth of phone and the scrap yeah i mean that's what it. uh what was one of the stories uh would be a very common story i dare say for anyone in eastern europe after the soviet union fell in russia and other places um ripping the copper wires up is what they fucking did man like they would back in those early days of the you know the very early months and and year after that happened anyone they needed money and there was a lot of dudes who made a lot of money just pulling the copper any copper out and reselling that and they fucked up a lot of whatever networks yeah dude that's well when i so this was um this it's not unusual for that to happen in a lot of areas big cities really probably mm. anywhere in the world now it's just i mean it's a whole scam of like going in stealing construction supplies copper either wiring or pipe and doing that i remember when i was working out in oregon and this would have been 15 plus years ago and that was the first time i saw like a major problem with that they were um so I, the in, there's an interstate system in the united states which is a driving system uh high speed and it's interconnected uh federal roads that let you go throughout uh, the whole country to big cities and then you just use maps G- gps now but mm. <clears throat> so you've got um you know you've got your infrastructure there of the roads and i'm i've literally just had a brain fart on what we were talking about just uh you were talking i was talking about the copper being pulled up and yeah yeah so about how anyway, it's happening with the highways so, yeah sorry the, thank you so the <laughs> highways right in the and then you have to have a place called a rest area where okay, it's just sure. like a government owned property mm. where they have some toilets, some vending machines, some natural area to walk around generally, and that's it. And maybe a little office with some maps and a park ranger style person sitting there. So um, a lot of those out west were un they wouldn't have any people in them, mm. and they'd go and they'd invest and they'd be like. We want everything in this bathroom to be aluminum, the toilets, everything. And they'd go put like $200,000 worth of these aluminum uh, play things in this in this place that is out in the middle of nowhere with nothing around it. Yeah. And uh-huh. crackheads would go out there and spend an entire day, like two days after they put all this in, and strip every piece of aluminum down to the walls <laughs> out of them and take it to the scrap metal and they said that like they would do that and they're like yeah we found it you know they got 500 bucks for it but they were you know it was taxpayer money that they would spend <laughs> and they were literally like they'd do all this work to get 500 bucks and they just spent you know a hundred thousand sixty sixty to a hundred thousand dollars installing these things in these public restrooms and then the worst part is if you had to actually go to the bathroom and you go and yeah, stop yeah, you in nothing. this place and it's nothing there's a hole in the floor and it's like what? where's the toilet <sighs> did you so, ever um when you're a kid did you ever pinch street signs signs Ooh, street so, signs like, yeah, was that a thing like you guys? not yeah. street signs see they could like get you in big trouble with some stuff uh, okay i remember like so like i don't know i mean in america it was like silly to b- do this thing called bash mailboxes you know that oh is? okay just knock them you just like run around, around oh, little <laughs> bat let's drive by and hit mailboxes so like i remember doing that and then i remember we grabbed one of the mailboxes and uh my friend was the only friend out of <clears throat> all of us that was old enough to have his own apartment when we were seniors in 
high school. Mm-hmm. And so we would go over there for days and just like do terrible things, you know, just like <laughs> vandalize stuff and go party at his house. And like the cops showed up one day and we had taken this mailbox that we had bashed and it was in like the laundry room of this apartment. And it was the only thing was this thing in the middle and we used to smoke doobies and just like use it as an ashtray and like <laughs> cigarettes and you just throw them all in this this is a smoking room you'd use this thing and the cops showed up and were like oh yeah what are you doing this is a this looks like federal offense here you got a a bashed mailbox down here with in the middle of the floor and i was like oh don't worry sir that was mine from my old house yeah okay, yeah i sure. remember the cops showing up and they were like oh oh okay well Huh, I guess you don't have it. He couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was not, like a, good, that. not a good time there. But yeah, that was one of the things was bashing My the friends mailboxes. And I, we never stole the signs, I don't think, though. We loved, we loved pinching street signs. Oh, <laughs> it was, we didn't do nothing bad. We didn't smoke dope back then. We only drank a little bit. We weren't that bad. Like it wasn't, it wasn't drunken. It wasn't drug fueled. It was just pure Aussie little shit. Like we just loved pinching street signs. Anything we could get our hands on. We were casing the neighborhood, looking for where no one would be watching us, making sure we had like one of every speed limit. You got to have one of every speed limit. You got to have the whole set. Um, get in those flashy things that used to have the big nine volt, those really big dolphin battery nine inch things and having those in there um getting a massive like road clothes that rob was using as his dj table um and when i was in australia recently driving around where i grew up uh and driving around with my girlfriend half of my stories were like oh yeah and we pinched that street sign and we <laughs> went to that place and oh you went oh yeah and, and back in the day no one was around this roundabout so we took all of them around this roundabout <laughs> and uh we Oh, it was when my, my, my father had a car phone. It was like car phones were the first oh, yeah. know, big thing. The company. No, no, I mean, no one had a personal car phone when you got a car phone. It was only a company thing. And then someone else had a phone and we were using it so that like I would park around the corner and then they would message and then I'd come around and we'd load the, the signs in and then <laughs> off. And I, just, I can't even describe what it was. We loved. And then we even with my car, we, we, what do we, we called it the Saddam drag named after U.S. forces in Iraq. So <laughs> if you couldn't get the sign off, you just put a bit of rope around the bottom of it and, and then the other end to your car and just oh, pull no. the whole fucking thing out. And then Did you could take the like whole thing. off their bumper accidentally? <laughs> no, no, no. You see the concrete comes out and then <laughs> the thing's down and you can more easily take the sign off the end. You don't have to climb to the top, right? So, you know, we perfected know. the Saddam drag. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there's little to do in the Australian countryside, and we found it all. So, uh, no. yeah, that was... We never, we never <laughs> stole them. That was, that's pretty good. See, like, here, I'm sure that, like, there's some fine or something that they, they could really give you trouble. There probably was. I mean, probably, no doubt yeah. there was. So they, if yeah, they I'm sure there would have been. Think... Thank God you didn't get, you know, imagine that. Imagine your whole future ruined for stealing signs, like, as a, <laughs> you know, like, know. you get, like, a serious court issue or something. The place we lived at, we lived in a, a share house. And the kind of way, it, kind of with the geography of the area, is that way down the street, the cars would have to kind of turn around the bend. And sort of, even though it was way off in the distance, the for a moment, the car's lights would coming. sort of flash yeah. kind of across the neighborhood, right? And when the car's lights came across our rental house, it lit up like a disco ball with all the <laughs> oh, street the- signs <laughs> that we'd have hanging on the inside. And then they would all flash out. Yeah. Um, but that was par for the course. Like, that was how it was around then. Yeah, so. see, the I remember when, when I went back from... So we were the... I told you the stories when we first had our first Zezcast together and mm-hmm. I told you about how we had the feuds going where people would spray like we would spray paint our own school with the Oh yeah with, yeah those stories know, yes. we sprayed paint on our own school to You did the false the, flag on your with, own yeah, school. Yeah we false flagged our own school with like the <laughs> rival school's colors to start the biggest rivalry in school history. It was literally like one of those wag the dog silly Hollywood <laughs> productions. Uh, but 
we thought that was cool. So there was always this lingering, um, you know, leave behind for the future generations to try to do some kind of prank that was try to, you know, make them establish something or I don't know, you know, <laughs> prank culture like, oh, we got to try to do something that they mm. did only our own style. So one year I came back home from college and every damn stop sign in our little hometown had a big black W that was not just a W. Do you know Wu-Tang Clan? Sure. So the, not, the Wu-Tang W, with, yeah. some freaking high school kid went around to every... And the thing is, is this is a cheap town, so they never did anything. So, like, it was for a decade just <laughs> Ws on every single street sign in the <laughs> suburbs of this neighborhood because some punk kid got out there and spray painted every single so you'd be like it'd be yield stop it doesn't matter have the big w on it and uh it was it was i, mean, I have to admit that one was one that stood out from uh, some mm-hmm. of the other pranks pretty ballsy <laughs> Oh, I love it. Oh, my God. These are the stories that are going to be recounted one day at our trial, Steve. One day. Oh, you know what? The <laughs> statute of limitations is up on a lot of these things. Exactly. And that's why you can't. You can't. Yeah. There's no evidence. This is all <laughs> just hearsay. That's I mean, that's the that's the funniest part in a court case. The worst. The worst evidence is testimony because I could believe it to be true. And it probably isn't even true. You yeah, know, right. it's, like, it's all about the human true. element and the time yeah, yeah. and everything. So, yeah, that uh, was the bad thing. Like when, oh my gosh, I got a good story. So the reason the cops showed up, like this was the party house. Oh, your friend's place in Perth's uh, party in house. Yeah. Again, this guy, he had like his mom. It was really tragic, man. This guy, his mom had AIDS back in the eighties and like mm. passed away from it when he was young. Okay. And like me and my friends, he was one of our best friends growing up. And but he was always in so much trouble, like always getting stuff. But he like lived with his aunt and uncle. So he finally turned 18 and he had some money left away for him. So he just wanted to get out and live on his own And he got his own apartment in town. And it was literally the place that we would all go hang out on weekends because mm-hmm. we're high school. And so we would be like, well, we don't want to stay home. We'll go party, hang out at our buddy's apartment. And uh, you never know who would show up. Right. It was like a core group of like five guys and then random other people from our town would show up that were in our age bracket, older or younger. Mm. And I'll never forget one time this guy, man, his name was Jimmy and he was thug and he was always trouble. You're always like, damn it, Jimmy, stay the hell away, you know, stay the hell away. And Jimmy, Jimmy shows up one weekend and Jimmy's like. Jimmy's always got the worst ideas, but he always gets everybody on board because he's like, ha, fellas, we go to the strip club tonight. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy's here. We're going to the strip club. And everyone's like, oh, God, no. And we're all broke. Like, you know, when go to the damn strip club, Jimmy, we all got like $10. And he's like, don't worry, I'll pay for you all to get in. And we're like, oh, gosh, this is sounding shadier and shadier. So, of course, I get wrangled into this. Yeah, pull my leg. Sorry. (laughs) I went to the gentleman's club. Yeah. So me and like 15 friends. And I'm like, yeah, Jimmy, what the fuck? You paid like the entry fee. So it's like twenty to five dollars a person to get in. And then, of Uh. course, and then, of course, you're the broke ass loser sitting there like trying to stay back so that the girls don't try to get up on you right right i don't know much about strip clubs but i know you got more money once you get in right you once you you get in then you got to spend money at like you got to sit there and throw dollars at them when they're dancing and i don't know if this is i mean i haven't been to one of these places in like 15 years but they are still around so i'm sure nothing has changed but anyway so you get jimmy and he's like oh yeah and so the other thing that these strip clubs do is they have this atm right Mm -hmm. but the atm doesn't put out regular money it puts out stripper dollars. However, it charges you the same amount of money, right? So it's like the monetary exchange is the same amount, but it's like mm. when you go to the arcade as a kid and you have to change your quarters for tokens. Right. It's the same thing when you get into this place. And that's the <laughs> way they deal with your credit card, right? If you mm. didn't come in with cash. Well, next thing I know, Jimmy's over there just pushing his card in his machine and coming out with stacks of these purple dollars like, like four thousand dollars worth of this and he 
disappears to the champagne room for like four hours. And the rest of us are broke, stuck out here trying to be like, we got to get the hell out of here. We're tired of sitting here being like the cheap guy, you know, not doing anything. So Jimmy finally gets out of the champagne room, spent all this money. And we go back, hang out to apartment and like pass out. Next thing we know, the next morning, man, five cops are banging on the door. Jim, we all wake up. We're like, what the hell? Who's banging on the door? And we look out the window and it's the cops. We look around. We're like, where the hell's Jimmy? (laughs) Of course he's gone. He's gone. We open the door and that's what they're doing. We need Jimmy. We're here (laughs) looking for Jimmy. And we heard he was here last night. And we're like, what? How is this even possible? Like, Jimmy we who? We didn't tell anybody Jimmy was it's like it, and so the cops, yeah, they gave us the ride act and everybody like half of us got half the people got out of it because they were 18 and there was nothing they could charge anybody with. But since some of us were under 18 and they found cigarettes, mm-hmm. they were able to call our parents and have them come pick us up from this apartment and kind of try to embarrass us a bit since we were under 18 and there were cigarettes and we're all hanging out at this apartment. And, uh, but yeah, they ran in there searching the place. We got to find Jimmy. And I was like, what's the deal with Jimmy? And so what Jimmy had done is Jimmy the night before Mm -hmm. snuck out of his mom's house, stole his stepdad's credit card and then ran up $5,000 on the card at the strip club on himself. (laughs) <laughs> and the cops were that close. They were they were hunting him down. And I was yeah. like, we're like, look, dude, we don't want Jimmy to come over. <laughs> He's not welcome again. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know where he is. Again, it's like so they didn't ghost. find Jimmy that day. No, so he'd he's already gone. That was her, like yeah. the last time. That was the last time I've seen Jimmy in my life. Oh, so that was it. You never <laughs> saw him again. No, I don't think so. And except <laughs> like on social media, you know, you're like, oh my gosh. And yeah, but he's the kind of guy that would eventually get caught and would go spend some jail time. You know. Okay. I mean, I guarantee, yeah, spend a week, months in jail. Who knows? Sure, especially Definitely. I mean, even for that, five grand. For, yeah, for from fraud. your stepdad, That's... of course. Yeah, you're gonna go to jail for six months for that, probably. Yeah, right on. So, yeah, that was. Uh, no, so were you under eighteen at that? Yes, event? yes, because I was, did... I was, I was one of the last people in my entire grade. My birthday was in August, so I literally graduated high school and I was still seventeen for the entire summer. Like I, I turned eighteen and went to college uh, about two weeks later, and like so did up you, to that. Did your point. parents have to come and get you? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I got arrested three times in like one summer <laughs> from drinking. Yeah, and partying at these places because my mom was right, single right. mom. So I mean, there were times. I, the worst of it was this: I had I had gotten arrested twice in one summer, and it was it was stupid stuff. It was like. Yeah. There's public parks around here. So you're like, oh, let's go get some beer and go hang out at the park and drink. And then, of course, the cops show up at like dark and just yeah. wandering around and find you back there with six pack. And then you're like, oh, shit. You know, you get a re- mm-hmm. you get a ticket, you get arrested. They make you do all this stuff and go to a judge. And that happened twice, like within two months. Like I went to a party, got busted, and then I got charged. Mm-hmm. And then I got charged at a park. And doing those two things and then after that my mom was like oh, you're grounded forever you're never i'm sending you to military school blah blah you're going to military yeah. academy you're out of control and so i was like yeah mom you're right okay i'm gonna take it easy and what i would do is i would she would work early and i would literally wait for everybody to go fall asleep and i would go sneak out the back door and jump on my huffy bike and bike it over to my friend's house that would be like partying all night and just like I did that till I went over to my friend's house and his parents were out of town and we broke into their liquor cabinet and I chugged huge glasses of Dewar's scotch whiskey <laughs> to the point where it was like two big glasses and I don't remember a single thing after that and like I like I almost had to go to the hospital and like my friend had to call my mom and explain to her wake her up in the middle of the night and say, yeah, your friend's like, your son's dying here, throwing up all over himself in the front yard. And she's like, no, he's in bed. And he's like, no, he's not in bed. He should come down here. I don't know what to do with him. And oh so, God. yeah, I, I mean, that was back. I was thankfully in high school and, you know, didn't hurt myself or anything, but I was a terrible, 
I love these stories. It's like a high school movie. It's like a teenage movie every time I hear it, these stories. <laughs> these like it sounds like some, I don't know, some movie where there's the guy Jimmy and there's oh, the characters oh, yeah, Jimmy, and the man. mom and the drink in the park and getting tickets. Oh, it sounds like an 80s yeah. teen flick. I love it. Well, I just hope it makes sense because it kind of, <laughs> it does like, it is funny to think about. I haven't thought about Jimmy in so long, man. Oh yeah. my gosh. We were so pissed at Jimmy because we're like, you know, it's like, oh, Jimmy, we had a good thing going here. We had our fun. Mm-hmm. You had to come spoil it with your over the top partying. The cops show up the next day. And you didn't even, he didn't even give you any titty money at the strip club. He no, took he it all. Gave the entry fee. He you got the entry it, yeah. fee and then he yeah. took the rest in. You, well, I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, How, what are you supposed to do? And he was like, well, if I go, they're going to find my car or something, right? If they, uh-huh. if they look and they're like, oh, here's, they probably were looking for him already. Because mm-hmm. I was like, that's why I was always like, guys, this doesn't sound like a good idea. Jimmy oh, he Flash. needed him to drive you. Yeah. Oh, they're like you're gonna like, drive like, him like, there. Like, oh, okay. we gotta go, man. We gotta go do this, man. Uh, just like, because dude. the strip club is the first place the cops look, or well, one of the places they're gonna look for someone that, who's on. Too, but see where we lived. It was a suburb, so <laughs> it's like forty-five minute drive to the, these clubs. It's not okay. just down the street. Right, it's yeah, you got to yeah, drive yeah. into Nashville. You're in the outskirts a little bit, and the next county line over and you know 20 20 plus miles away from nashville so you're somebody of course yeah you're like normally you're just like oh let's sit around and and you're like trying to do anything to find like a a dime bag of weed and then go like smoke it and buy and like oh dude we gotta go order cheeseburgers (laughs) and then you're like I can remember doing that and then being like, dude, who the hell? Could, you, you, the first couple of times you do that and you're like, I, I don't think I can walk inside. And like you try to order a cheeseburger and then like the people are laughing at you because they're like, your eyes are so red. And you're like, no, man, they know. And so like that was this whole time period of progressing from that little bit of just like because we didn't. Yeah, when I was growing up, I didn't like smoke weed till we got into like our senior year. And then it was like everybody that was my friend, they were they were all used to be these guys on like the, the football team and stuff. They literally all just quit and said, screw this. We're just going to party all senior year. <laughs> and that's all that's all we did. We didn't even like we would we would go. This is a terrible thing to say, too. But somebody in our friend in our group would go go to shoplift from sneaker stores. Okay. Yeah. Big sports stores. They go steal mm. shoes and then they trade the shoes to the weed dealer for weed. And so we were laughing. We we're like, we don't even know how much real weed's supposed to like cost. We just been trading <laughs> my friend's you know, been, it cost a hot one sneaker. Yeah, That's what my friend's been trading shoes for this stuff. I don't like <laughs> what I was like, I think these shoes are like eighty bucks. I don't know how much that converts to to on the black market <laughs> on this other stuff, but yeah, it was like there were crazy people in these um, in this group, and we were all fueled by these very, uh, you know, it's funny to look back and see how these have actually these these cultural movies have imprinted on society. I remember Fight Club came out like, and that you know, you remember this movie? Yeah. That was like our movie was like Fight Club, and it was like we're gonna we're like this badass club, and we will go and like just spray paint shit beat up we didn't really beat up anybody or anything mm. but we'll do this other crazy stuff like friends again you know in those other podcasts we talked about spray paint goats and all kinds of nonsense pranks <laughs> and it was just like silence never tell anybody anything um but that that was a big portion of it and it was we were especially connected to fight club because one of my f- best friends at that time, his older brother is in Fight Club, and he's like one of the first recruits oh. of Fight Club. So he had this minor role in it. So oh, we didn't even know about the movie. We we're like, we all went and saw it in theaters because we we're like, dude, your brother's in this movie, and his name is Ian Bailey. If anybody wants to look up the actor, you can look him up. He's been in like a bunch of shows and some movies back in that time period when mm-hmm. Fight Club came out. And he, uh, so he was one of the, you know, the main character, not, not the main characters, but one of the main er characters had a lot of lines in it. So just the idea of the movie being extremely cool and this like anti-culture, like what do men do with all this masculine energy when society's telling them to put it into 
uh, an apartment and live an Ikea lifestyle. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of weird symbolism and things. I didn't even realize how deep that movie was at the time. We just thought it was our anthem to go out and cause anarchy and chaos in our way we could. <laughs> sure. It fired up it, the testosterone and the chemicals and the bl- bl- blood pumping through young men. Yeah, I, we felt it as well, right? Like, yeah, that's why he was taking out all those street signs. So everybody right. spoke to us. Yeah. This is how much, how much growing up did you like, how, how much did you let that exploration go? Because, you know, it's like, it's like now thinking back, it's way too nuts. I can't believe I did any of that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, just the risk of doing any of that stuff now makes me feel like a big pansy. But it was also incredibly stupid, and you're like incredibly lucky that you don't trip out running out of a crazy place doing something stupid and like fall onto a cop, <laughs> you know? Right. And like ruin it's... your life. Like <laughs> you're literally doing things that if you got caught in like the right situation could end up with a five-year jail sentence or something right you just don't mm. even know so it's thankful i'm thankful that none of them too serious ever happened just thankfully getting caught drinking in the park as a kid that's, that's the worst thankfully that's nothing yeah that's nothing uh nothing too bad oh god damn yeah it's i is young men we have I don't know. They've done all, I mean, all the studies show like young men, they don't have any idea of the future. They don't have a comprehension of the future. They got all sorts of chemicals running through them that tell them to do stupid stuff. Tell us to not think about the future, to not have implications. We have all the chemicals that are running through us that reduce our perception of danger. We're going to do stupid stuff. I don't know, do pseudo or possibly criminal things or just even like hey you know what's a great idea let's jump off the roof of the house under the grass yeah let's, anything like that you know, I mean, stupid it's, anything stupid let's do it's it literally anything it's it's just something that sounds so stupid you and, I, and it's obviously a coming of age thing and it's mm. it's how many um you know you're told everything your whole life at what point do you finally say screw this enough is enough i know this is bad for me but i'm doing it anyway because i want to know what it feels like to do something bad or something like that i feel like that's probably you know you're pushed up your whole adolescence <clears throat> because you're you're sheltered by your most of us are sheltered by a parent or somebody or guardian to try to get us out of these situations and there eventually comes a time where you get out on your own. I mean, I know from my personal stuff, that's what I'm saying. Like, I got out of my own, and I was like, I am so sick and tired of everybody telling me either what I should be doing or telling me that I should know what I'm supposed to be doing, like, with my mm-hmm. life, right? Because that's – when you're getting to, like, that age in high school and ending – and everybody, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing with your next step? What are you, know, what, what you going to study in college? What do you really want to be? And you're like, what do I want to be? What the hell is there to be? Well, I don't know. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, right? It's yeah, like, yeah, right. And then well, there's you, big but expectations which you can't comprehend. Yeah, but it, and you're a kid, and a lot of times those jobs that like your parents have done, they're good jobs. You, like, you think about it now, and you think, wow, that was a really good job. I'd love to have that mm. kind of a job now or like a career in that or something. But at that time when you're a young child and adolescence, you're like, I don't want to do this shit. I don't want to do anything like this. I was like, I want to go and be like one of those guys on Jackass. I like, I want to go jump out of, yeah, <laughs> jump off stuff. Uh, we had, we had a geometry project when our senior year was going on. Of course, Jackass was running high. I wasn't even in this class. This was my roommate, that a friend that, I was telling you about that we broke into his liquor cabinet. Mm -hmm. We had this geometry project and it was like, go out and measure shadows and like tell how tall this pole is by measuring a shadow. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And the teacher was like, if you guys have the capability, you can go out and for extra points, film it with a camera. And it's like, you know, a VHS camera. And you get a couple shots of you out there talking about what you're measuring and showing the shadow. And so these are normally stupid videos in geometry class that you show. And so my friend, I was like, I already passed this class, but my friend, he was always bad in math, this guy. And he's like, oh, I got this geometry project with this other guy who's real nerdy. He's coming over today and we're working on it. And I just remember they were videotaping them at this flagpole or something. And I was like, I'm going to get them real good. So I... (laughs) 
I did the old uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers trick, and I I got down stripped naked, and I put a sock, a tube sock, around my junk. And then I literally just ran around in the background (laughs) while they're talking. (laughs) And, like, the nerd kid didn't even know I did it. Like, Mm -hmm. and so... The other friend was, he was like, fuck it, man. We're just, I'm not even going to say anything. We're just going to play this in class and see what happens. <laughs> and they did that, man. They played it in the class. And like, all of a sudden they said, holy shit, there's, what's that going on in the background? And, they, and they're like, it's naked nutter. It's a naked <laughs> nutter back there. Run. And then the, te- the teacher, they said, like, fell on himself trying to run up and turn the TV off. But... <clears throat> I don't know what would possess me to do that because you'd probably get in trouble for doing that like immensely now. But I was like, back then I didn't care. And I remember talking with like other teachers who thought I was extremely funny and like liked me. And they were like, oh my gosh, Nutter, we heard about that. That was hilarious. (laughs) Oh, you're crazy. And it's so it was, it was like, there was always just like, I had to just press the envelope. I remember Mm. when I was, for me, you know, it was just like, how far can I go? Till I till I do go too far, and sometimes I did go too far. You gotta test caught. the boundary. I'm the only thing going through your mind when you're doing that is just that jackass theme. Yeah, that's it. It's just like, it's just like, it's just like remember. Yeah. I was just like, remember, you're naked. Don't jump in that bush. It might be funny, <laughs> but it will be extremely painful if you jump in that bush wearing just this tube sock. <laughs> oh my god! So we've had good. I, I tell you what, Steve, I got to wrap it up soon. I think we've we'll been going it's over an hour. an hour. Yeah. We've done the it's hour. Good, it's past. It's almost hour, midnight here. We've got some good stories here. So, um, we got off yeah, topic. Though, that's good. Yeah. We didn't even, we didn't talk, <laughs> we were going to talk about S video and composite. Didn't oh, even I forgot get to that. about that. Yeah. Bob, we didn't talk about Bob. It doesn't matter. We had good stories. We'll have to do that next for the time. Next we got more next time. We were going to have a wrap yeah. up just talking about the podcast I did with Bob and also oh, the shoot. very yeah, interesting. Yeah. We didn't even talk about the Bob podcast, which I was so ready to. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it was. A great I would. Show, I would though. right now. Go back but and I'm... watch it, everybody. If you haven't watched it already, go you'll learn a lot. One. Business stuff. I made some cool stuff about business. Uh, that was a lot of fun. So yeah, sorry, Lewis. We kind of got man. No, it's good, man. Topic. I like the stories. <laughs> no, so uh, we'll talk about it next time. We got more topics yeah. uh, lined up, and uh, we got. I could save it for next time. We'll talk more about the tremendous uh, Mister Cause that Mike oh, yes. Simone's been making Native S video and composite. Uh, instead, we talked about alcohol and getting caught by the cops and strip clubs and street signs. It's great. Good <laughs> stories. Good stories. Oh, goodness. Deary me. So we're going to have um, from this, we've got two weeks off from the Cathode Ray podcast right now um, because you're traveling. Is it two weeks or one week the way we do it? It's, yeah, two uh, weeks. Yeah, it'll be two weeks travel time, but we'll have this one and then one more. And then after that, um, I know Lewis and I have been teasing. Maybe we can do some kind of a live episode. Really live. Right. So live so badly. We'll yes. have to figure oh, out yes, what time yes. will kind of be the best on that. And after we get back, because I'd like to do that before. It's right after, right after that trip. I've got a couple weeks and then I got to turn around for that big museum job. Mm, which is mm, going to be pretty crazy and epic. So I think there'll be a lot of cool things to talk about about that. Yeah, that's cool, man. Um, cool. All right. Well, look, uh, I'll still <laughs> be doing some podcasts and some interviews. I've got some videos of my own coming up. So there'll still be some content. So thank you very much, everyone, for listening to our stories. I, that's what I like. I like just sitting here yeah. shooting the shit, talking about stuff. We hope that you enjoy uh, our stories and our crazy times as well. Steve, we'll see you next week. See you later. Bye.